Let's begin by defining what the WWC means by an outcome. An outcome is the knowledge, skills, attitudes, behaviors, or other measurable characteristic that researchers measure to learn about the impact of an intervention. Eligible group design studies estimate the effectiveness of an intervention by comparing measured outcomes from a group that receives the intervention to outcomes for a group that does not receive the intervention. An outcome measure is an instrument, device, or method that provides data on the outcome of interest. Impact evaluations use outcome measures to estimate the effect of the intervention. For example, studies commonly use achievement tests as outcome measures. An outcome domain is a group of closely related outcomes. The WWC review protocols describe the eligible outcomes and domains for their review areas. This example from the beginning reading review protocol illustrates these definitions and highlights the differences between the three terms. One of the domains included in this protocol is alphabetics. The alphabetics outcome domain includes several important outcomes measured in literacy studies, including phonemic awareness, phonological awareness, letter identification, print awareness, and phonics. Studies can use outcome measures such as the Dynamic Indicators of Basic Early Literacy Skills, or DIBLS, Letter Naming Subtest, Test of Word Reading Efficiency, TAURI, and Phonological Awareness Test, PAT, to measure the outcomes in this domain. Researchers might examine many different outcome measures in the study. How does the WWC determine which to review? The WWC applies an outcome measure standard to determine whether the measures used to estimate the effect of the intervention are credible. Let's start with an overview of the outcome measure requirements, which we will discuss in more detail throughout the module. First, the outcome measure must have face validity. That is, it must measure what it claims to be measuring. Second, the measure must have sufficient reliability. That is, it must produce the same types of scores if it is administered over and over to different people in different settings, and so on. Third, the measure must avoid overalignment. When an outcome measure is closely aligned or tailored to the intervention, the study findings may not be an accurate indication of the effect of the intervention. Again, we'll go deeper into this concept shortly. Fourth, the outcome measure must use consistent data collection procedures for the intervention and comparison groups. Did the researchers collect data for the measure in the same way for the intervention and comparison groups? Any difference in outcome measure between the intervention and comparison groups should relate to the intervention and not to the measurement process or the measure itself. Let's dig deeper into each of these requirements.